Hello guys and welcome to TGN the Game Nerd the Show where I talk about play games and today we're going to be playing Super Mario Sunshine. In the last episode, if you don't remember, we went ahead and finished up everything in Rico Harbor, got the seven main shines that we need to get there. And in this episode, another pr proto piranha has appeared here. I think this is the sixth one we've fought. I've completely lost count. Uh, and so now we're just going to defeat this guy and hope that we find a new world. Just like the one that uh, locked away Rico Harbor, this Proto Piranha goes down after six hits. He dives back down. He sprays out these little uh, jelly creatures. I'm not really sure what those are called. They remind me of, I believe they're called Choo Choo's from uh, the Zelda games. Uh, but they're obviously not. They do remind me of like gummy bears and stuff though. One thing that you might not notice on a first playthrough is that uh, way up at the top there, at the top of the lighthouse, there's this optional thing where there's this uh, thing that you can ground pound, but you can only get up there after you get a certain power up. Uh, but that like stone thing up there that you need to ground pound is always there up in the air, and if you rewatch that cutscene of the uh, lighthouse sprouting out of the ground, you'll see that... That stone thing is way up in the air at the very top of the cutscene. Uh, so yeah, that's something funny. This next one is a uh, very interesting world that we're going to get into. Gelato Beach, Episode 1, Dunebud Sandcastle Secret. Starting off with a secret level this time. Alrighty, so first thing that I should mention is these guys right here, these duck looking things, these are cataquacks. And what they do is they just toss you up in the air, and uh, yeah, I think they're adorable. They can be a bit annoying, especially during this one optional mission. Uh, they can be a bit annoying. Uh, there's this infamous water level mission, or watermelon level. Uh, where you have to get this watermelon uh, over to the certain part on the beach, uh, but you need to uh, make sure that nothing touches it or else it'll pop for some reason. But yeah, those guys can immediately pop the watermelon and it can just be super annoying. Thankfully, we're not doing that mission though. That one mission is a part of what I like to call the big three of Mario Sunshine levels. Where they're just super tedious and annoying. Um, if you've uh, played through Mario Sunshine before, or at least tried to 100% it, or have seen someone else try to 100% it, then you probably know uh, what some of the other levels might be. And I'll mention uh, those other levels when they're relevant. Uh, well okay, I'm glad I didn't go flying off the edge right there. I almost did went flying off the edge right there. I'm gonna sit here for a second and regroup because I fell like three different times there. All right, this should be easy. Watch, I say that and I'm immediately gonna die. There we go, okay. That level can be a bit of annoying because of the, all of the falling sand there at the end can, can kind of get in your way. Not really get in your way, but they can be super annoying to deal with. Thankfully, though, that wasn't too bad. So, uh, world number four appears right over there. And one issue that will become readily apparent, these toads are now all freaking out. Uh, if we talk to this guy right here. Horrible, horrible, Princess Peach has been kidnapped. Not again. Anyways, we're... I know it seems really urgent, but we're gonna get back to... Uh, working on this world, and then eventually we'll go over there and help out Princess Peach. Mirror Madness, Tilt Slam Bam. This is the one I remember causing me trouble when I was younger. <laughs> alert, alert, just look at the top of the tower.
Some weird thing is curled up on the tower to take a nap. This could endanger the legendary sandbird egg. The legendary sandberg. This is something... The legendary sandberg is pretty infamous. Uh, it has its own specific level that we're actually going to get to in a little bit. Uh, it's not one of my big three worst Mario levels ever. But, you know what? It's annoying for a lot of people. Anyways, what we have to do is we need to go up here with these... I used to think that these were just, like, red cataquacks, but I think they have their own name. I'll put it up on screen if I can find it. I should not be having trouble just getting up onto the first platform here. It's really not that difficult. You just... I'll just get up here, and then jump, flood. There we go. So to deal with these guys, you want to push them over to the edge of their, uh, edge of these platforms. Grand Pound on the opposite side. And yeah, that's how you deal with them. Good job. Two areas are left. So we have, uh, two more platforms left, each with a different number of cataquacks or whatever they are. Uh... We had one platform with one cataquack, we have a second platform with two cataquacks, and of course we'll have another platform with a with three cataquacks. I used to have trouble with this mission because I would try to just spray them uh, normally, but what you want to do is you want to hold down R all the way so that Mario stays in place and you're allowed to uh, spray them a lot easier. Just to sort of visualize what I mean, uh, I would try to spray them like this, uh, where Mario can still walk around, but if you hold down R all the way, of course Mario can aim his shots like this, and if you just do that to deal with the Cataquacks, then you should be pretty good most of the time. Uh, this third platform might get a bit annoying. Whoop! Accidentally pressed Z there. That brings up a map. Oh! That's right, I, I forgot to bring up something in previous episodes, which is a shame because it's one of my favorite things about this game. I'll get to it in a second. When we go back to uh, Delfino Plaza, I'll remember to bring it up. Alright, that's all the Cataquacks dealt with. Alrighty, now just make your way on over to the shine and collect your prize. The thing that I like about this game that they don't really do in any, in any other 3D Mario game is if I stand right here on the beach and look out over there, there's an island way way there in the back that we can that we can't reach normally. That is the Delfino airstrip that we saw in episode one. All the way out over there. And so what this kind of does is that it shows that the island is connected uh, in a way. And another way that we can see this is if we head on over to the west part of the island, uh, we can see Rico Harbor right over there. There's all of the blue platforms that we had to climb up during that one uh, level. And right over there, that uh, island with the ferris wheel, that's another level, and you can't really see it from here, it's a lot easier to see from Rico Harbor, but uh, the white cliffs that are above uh, Rico Harbor uh, is part of Bianco Hills, and you can actually see this if you go into Bianco Hills, there's a sign that says, that points out where the different levels are, and you can see it from way up there. So in each level, you can actually see other different levels and see how the whole world connects, and if you press Z, you get this map that sort of brings it all together. Also, it's in the shape of a- the island is in the shape of a dolphin, because I believe Isle Delfino in like French or something like that is literally like Dolphin Island or something similar. 
And it's uh, interesting because the um, the console that this is on, the GameCube, was originally going to be called uh, the Dolphin, and but it was changed to the GameCube, of course. And that name like became the name of the rocket that uh, Olimar has in Pikmin One. Anyways, back to the levels. Episode 3, Wiggler Ahoy, full steam ahead. So the Wiggler was pretty upset that we woke it up from its nap, and now it's endangering the many people that are hanging out here on the beach. So to fight this guy, there are these plants around uh, the beach. If you spray with a ton of water, I'm not really sure, sure how this works, but a ton of sand erupts from that area once you spray the plant with enough water. Very weird. Uh, but that'll allow us to flip the wiggler over and then ground pound on one of its body segments. Yep, that flipped it over there. So that's the best place, at least for me, to try to get the wiggler is right over there in that spot. And for the third one, this one might be a bit trickier to deal with, but you want to stand over by this plant right here. And he'll eventually come around here. Well, The wiggler freaked out for a second. But yeah, it comes by here. I might have been too late on that. Yeah. Alright, just gotta wait for it to come around again. Uh, but yeah, over there's Rico Harbor. Uh, we can see that, uh, once again, that this whole world is connected. But yeah, now the Wiggler has been dealt with, or at least he might. Sometimes when he goes into the water, uh, it becomes impossible to ground pound some of the segments. Thankfully, we don't have any trouble with that. Also, the Wiggler was made out of sand, I guess. But yeah, there's that Ferris wheel island that we saw uh, earlier when I was pointing out all of the different places we're connected. And of course, that right up there is uh, Bianco Hills. And I don't know if we'll be able to see it very well. But beyond Rico Harbor, of course, is Isle Delfino. Anyways, that's shine number three. Whoop. Completely missed that. There we go. The Sand Bird is Born. This is a level that I've heard a lot of people have struggled with, and I definitely did my first uh, couple times playing through this game. Uh, but once you know pretty much what's going to happen, it'll be really easy to prepare for it. So, to, in order to actually get over to the Sand Bird, you want to head over to its egg. And of course we know where that is because we just uh, dealt with you know, the Wiggler, who was, you know, I guess sucking the life out of the sand bird. I forget exactly what it was doing, but yeah, it was messing with the sand bird over here. And you just want to hop right into here, go inside its egg, I guess. And that'll teleport us into the sky with the sand bird, made out of actual blocks of sand. So there are eight there are eight red coins in total, of course. Seven of them are on the sand bird itself. Uh so there are two in the front. Whoops. Accidentally grabbed a blue coin. That'll probably be the only blue coin of the series. So there are two uh red coins in the front, uh two red coins on each wing, uh so four in total, and then one one red coin on the tail right here. And once you collect those, you just want to stand in the center, and eventually, if you wait long enough, the sand bird is going to start to turn on its side, like right here. You want to switch to the hover nozzle, and be prepared to jump, just in case. And you just want to slowly uh, climb onto the side of it as it starts to flip. It's just going to stay on its side for a while, and then once it begins to turn back over, 
Prepare to jump once more, hover nozzle if you need to. And you should be good there, just stay in the center of the bird for a little bit. And we want to get up to the top of this tower. Uh, so this is sort of just, we're just going to sort of be waiting here for a bit. And once we've made it to the top, we can collect our eighth and final red coin. If I'm good at actually collecting things. Gelato Beach Episode 5, Il Piantissimo Sand Sprint. So this guy, Il Piantissimo, he is a recurring character that we're going to see a lot. I am Il Piantissimo, and now we shall race to that flag. I know he probably has a higher pitched voice, but I think it's funnier if the short little guy has like a really deep and, I don't know, just this really deep voice. It is a race to the, f to the finish flag, and only one can triumph. By the way, the current record is 35 seconds. Are you at the ready? Then get set and go! So basically replacing Koopa the Quick from Mario 64, we have Il Piantissimo. This guy is going to basically race to the flag and we just need to beat his time. Uh, an easy way to do this is to just wall jump there and use your hover, hover nozzle to climb up the mountain here. I'm sure people have done it a lot faster, but you know what? I beat Il Piantissimo, which I'm perfectly fine with. Now we just gotta wait. I believe this guy, similar to the blooper surfing safari, also kills you if you lose the race. <laughs> you are pretty good. You have some speed. You have grown ever so slightly in my esteem. Slightly. We will meet again, and goodbye. Gelato Beach Episode 6, Red Coins and the Coral Reef. Alright, so this one is pretty infamous, uh, or not really infamous. Uh, this one is just pretty annoying in my book. Uh, it's a red coin mission. Six of the red coins are in set positions. They're in the same spot every time. However, two red coins move around a lot. Uh, and sometimes they can get stuck in walls. In fact, nine times out of ten, they're going to get stuck in a wall. Uh, and you have to wait for it to get out. Okay, so there's number one. Uh, here's a moving one. I'm going to see if I can uh, grab it without it giving me much trouble. It swims away from you. Also, you have to deal with this fish who's constantly trying to eat you. Okay, there's red coin number two. There's a second one that's also moving around. Uh, it's probably stuck in a wall somewhere. So I'll just go around getting the different coins that are already in set positions. And then I'll actually, uh, you know, begin the hunt for that last one. Uh, it can be quite annoying just because, you know, you have to get it to swim away. I, coins can't even... S I was about to make an argument that, you know, coins can't swim, but honestly, in the Mario universe, there are tons of stranger things. Uh... I think is that the moving one? No, that's a one. That's one in a set position. There's the moving one. I saw it on the right side of the screen there. And yep, phasing into a wall. Ah. While we're trying to get this thing, uh, one thing that uh, is interesting about the soundtrack is that it does the same thing that Super Mario World does. 
in the fact that uh, it's pretty much the same song every time, but with different inst instruments, tempos, and just... They all give off a different sort of vibe, so they just feel like different songs. Thankfully, that fish doesn't instantly kill you, otherwise that would have been incredibly frustrating. But thankfully, we've gotten our sixth shine, meaning the next one is Shadow Mario, and then we'll be done with Gelato Beach. Gelato Beach Episode 7, it's Shadow Mario after him! Alright, this one uh, might cause you a bit of trouble, uh, but it's, it, overall it's not too bad. One thing that I've neglected to mention is that uh, Shadow Mario's theme is just the underground theme from Super Mario Bros. 1. And he's down. Dang it, this ain't over. And with that, we have been brought to the end of Gelato Beach. With shine number 22. And with that, at 22 shines, we are almost halfway through the game already, and it's only episode 3. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching, in the next episode, we're gonna go ahead and try to actually go after and save Princess Peach from being kidnapped. Kind of forgot that that was a plot point right now. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye bye